Strings definitely play a part in achieving my unique sound. I like to say the bass acts as another lead instrument, so I want my strings to really bring out the brightness and the grit, and I think the Daddario strings do just that. Hey, I'm John Bolger with Premier Guitar. We are in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm with Carmen Vandenberg of Bones UK. Carmen, thanks, thanks so much for uh, having us over. Thanks for having me. Um, okay, I've seen you with this guitar a lot. Mm -hmm. That Telecaster, can you tell me a little bit about it? It is my baby. Um, it flies with me everywhere. I even got an air tag for it now, so when I fly, I know where it is at all times. Good idea, yeah. It's a, a 63 Tele, um, and I got it when I was, I don't know, like 19, 20, 20 years really? old. No Tom's Guitars on Denmark Street, which is a vintage guitar store. But when the owners told me that there was a guitar that I would really like, I couldn't really afford it, so I would go every day to the store and play it so no one else could play it. <laughs> um, and then when I had to leave, I'd be calling the store, it's like, did anybody buy it? And then a friend of mine, um, Ian Siegel, who's one of my mentors, amazing blues singer, um, lent me the money. And because of that, a week later, I got one of my first like session gigs and was able to pay him back. Oh, week. So, yeah. But fabulous. it's been my baby for, forever. God, that's great. So it's 63. So has yeah, there I been mean, many changes to it? Yeah, it's had a few changes. So it's, you can't call it an authentic 63, yeah. but um, the body, the neck, it are all original. Yeah. Yeah. God, that's great. Okay. Uh, do you know um, what pickups are in it? or? No, whatever was here. Yeah. They're I, old. I, uh, <laughs> that's yeah. all I know. Yeah, I get it. Okay. I mean, um, they're, they're amazing. I mean, I mainly, with Bones, mainly use it here. It's not. It's it's beautiful when it's warm, but you know, for bone, I use it less there. But. Sure, a little more aggressive. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it cuts through. That's why you, just, you know, you don't want to kill people's ears with tellies. <laughs> sure. So you have to figure the rest of it out <laughs> with the amps and the pedals. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so that's your number one, and then over here you have this Duesenberg. What is the story on this? Duesenberg's an amazing company. Um, they've supported me for a while now. I recently got this one in Germany we were supporting Queens of the Stone Age oh. and my gear didn't arrive uh, and so I was panicking because yeah my guitars hadn't arrived in time so Duesenberg came because the show was in Hamburg so they, they, they drove and brought me four guitars just in case mine didn't arrive in time and then I saw that one and I was like can I please keep it it's a Julia the model is a Julia and I have one which is like blue but then they showed me this one and I was like She's a stunner. Oh, yeah. yeah. God, I, these crazy pickups are like kind of yeah. triangular with a with a square top. Yeah, it's really interesting. They're amazing. And for me, these these are the best. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're, the, the accuracy is like you can only get it with, in my opinion, with Duesenberg's and Strats, like Jeff used to. Sure. The accuracy of tone that you can get. Sure. Um, uh, is it a big adjustment jumping between the, the two as far as like playability? Do you have to, I, the Duesenbergs I've played before, it seems like you have, to, you have to work a little harder. I mean, this one's volume is insane, but um, I've, been, I've been playing a Julia for so long. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's always, it depends on the song. Sure. And what it needs, like even with Mars here with Bones, it's just like, if the song needs you know, this is a semi-hollow, so if it needs a rounder, more in-depth kind of sound, I'll go to that one. <clears throat> but I know the neck. Yeah. So it's, it's, it, it's easier to jump from this to this than it would be to jump from this to like a Gibson, which I love as well. Yeah. And I have a few of those. Um, 
they were kind enough to give me an SG recently oh. with a really nice thin neck. But um, you know how like bendings with, when you jump from a to, uh, from a fender to a Gibson, you might it takes a while to like not go sharp or not go flat. You right. know what I mean? Because like the, the pressure is is different. Right. With these two are more are, are quite similar, so I don't. Oh, that's great. Yeah, because on some guitars you really have to like recalibrate. Yeah, you just have to yeah. rethink. You yeah. know, it's like some guitars are easier to bend, so yeah. you know. This one isn't, so I'll, I'll go sharp <laughs> on a, if yeah. I play a PRS, I'm way too sharp because yeah. it's so easy to play. Yeah, yeah right. They're too easy. <laughs> yeah. They're